This is a towards 0.1 micron mule blade provided by Joel Colton. And basically a little temporary grip that he made up for ease of holding onto it. I had a number of these blades from 58 to 66 Rockwell. The heat treatment was done by Peters. They all had the same soak and the same quench. And the difference in hardness was produced by varying the tempering temperature. Um, I'm going to do quite a bit of work with these blades, again as part of the mule project. And the first thing I checked was edge retention on vanilla hemp. Uh, I'm going to put up a link to the discussion form in the description where the method is discussed in great detail. Essentially I slice the rope using a two inch section of the blade. I measure the sharpness periodically and based on how the sharpness decreases over the lifetime uh, I'm able to determine or quantify how the blade responds, its edge retention characteristics, and then I can compare that for various hardnesses. Taking all of that data, which is quite a large amount of data, as in thousands and thousands of pieces of rope cut and thousands and thousands of measures of sharpness, I reduced it all down to one chart which basically then showed the edge retention as a function of hardness and I was able to show that it was linear that the edge retention increased with hardness and it was approximately about an 8% increase for every hardness point. There are a couple of quick conclusions that you would draw from that. One would be it's very difficult uh, for someone just using a blade to spot the kind of performance difference that would come from one, two, or even three points of hardness. If you think you can measure these things as precisely as five or ten percent, well good luck is uh, all I could say. Because even Catra type work isn't nearly as precise and accurate as five percent and that's extremely controlled. Uh, there's just a tremendous amount of things which influence the performance and some of them you have almost no control over such as for example the actual microstructure of the blade and how much of the edge that you form hits carbides, how much of it hits martensite, how much of it hits the non-martensite phases which could be perlite, bainite or austenite. That's more of a difference on steels like D2 than it is with 1095 as there is more aggregates and more differences in the actual microstructure. But even when you think about things like how much force you're applying, how much bead, uh, the angle of the cut, uh, the initial sharpness, the initial angle that you're sharpening at, and the massive changes that occur in the actual material uh, that you're cutting, because manila hemp uh, is nowhere near uh, consistent. It easily varies about 100% from one cut to the next and cardboard is even uh, worse, can easily vary 10 times from one piece to the next in how abrasive it is and how it affects the edge. So it takes quite a bit of work and quite a bit of statistics to get those numbers out. The other thing though is um, from a maker or manufacturer point of view if every Rockwell point is around 8% uh, in terms of edge retention you kind of want to be kind of particular about um, hardness because nonsense and hype aside, the differences between very high end and midpoint blades are not hundreds of orders of percent. Even if you look at, for example, claims from manufacturers which tend to be on the high side, you look at edge retention claims directly from Crucible on some of their steels, they may only say like 20 or 30 percent. So if a change in hardness of about one point is around 8%, it means, well, you have to be kind of critical uh, from that perspective. So again, one thing that I would like to say, and please take consideration here. When I'm saying that the change in edge retention was about 8%, I'm doing a very particular type of cutting with a very specific angle, with a very specific edge finish on a very specific material. That's a lot of specifics. If you change those things, the edge retention characteristics can change as well. 
So you would expect them to be similar. So when you cut hemp, what happens to the edge? Well, it's exposed to relatively low forces. It's exposed mainly to slow wear. It's not really corroded, and it's not really impacted. So if you did some hemp cutting, you would expect cardboard cutting at a similar edge angle and a similar edge finish to give similar results. You wouldn't expect if you went out and started chopping wood with these blades to have the same sort of effect because then you're looking at mainly toughness and the edge retention could completely reverse. The other thing that I'll say is that this testing was done blind. When I got these blades, I didn't know what the hardnesses were. They all just had random numbers marked on them. So I did the work, wrote down the edge retention for each blade, just marked by that random number. And after I got the bulk of the work done, I talked to Joe Calton, who's the maker, shared the results with him, then he told me what the blades were. The other thing is, when I actually do the sharpness measurements, I don't even know how much material is cut, even that's blinded. Because at random intervals, I have friends and family, pretty much people who stop over, do some cutting. They don't tell me how much cutting is actually done. And only when I get the final results, I'll calculate and tabulate it. I'll send them an email and say, by the way, how many cuts did you do the other night? And it can be anywhere from zero to usually a few dozen, but every now and again, some will get a bit ambitious and do a bit more. So that's the first update. I'll be putting the whole library page, mule page up rather shortly. Just wanted to give people an update, let them know that the mule project is undergoing. There are blades uh, coming in. There are some makers and manufacturers who are contributing to it who want to support this project. And there's lots of ways for people to get involved. And again, the purpose of this isn't to put up a web page and say, look, here are everything that Cliff Stamp that I have come to know about these blades. The purpose of it is to actually be a library. It will be amalgamating and putting together results from anyone and everyone who wants to work with these blades to whatever standard of precision and accuracy that they want to do. You don't need to be really controlled and uh, very specific like I am. If you want to take two blades and just use them for a season doing some kind of cutting or fish work or just use them doing in your kitchen and come back and offer commentary, that's perfectly valid. There's no constraints on any limits of precision or accuracy. There's only two rules. Number one, you have to be absolutely honest and you have to report everything that you find, good or bad or ugly. And the second rule is you can't be an idiot. As long as you can satisfy those two rules, the mules are there, you can request them. And again, I'm going to put the page up rather shortly, just get some databases up and running. And hopefully, we'll start churning this in, and this will turn into a real project where people who actually want real information on blades, not just hype and misinformation and anecdotal nonsense and propaganda, is going to be here. And along with the work that I'm going to be doing myself, there's also going to be materials testing done on these. Stuff like Catra, QFOG, and a bunch of other stuff done on it.